Hi there. This teacher guide is about our Mindset Learn series of lessons on electromagnetism. In this guide, we tell you what the series of lessons is about and how it links to the curriculum. We also discuss ideas for using the lessons with your learners. You may want to make notes, so have pencil and paper ready. There are seven lessons in this series in which we investigate the relationships between electric current and magnetism. In the first three lessons, we show how an electric current passing through a conductor produces a magnetic field. In lessons four to six, we explore how a magnetic field can be used to produce or induce an electric current in a conductor. And in the final lesson, we show how a magnetic field affects a stream of charged particles. This series of lessons links to the core knowledge area of electricity and magnetism and addresses the theme of electromagnetism. In this series, we have conducted many different experiments in order to support an inquiry approach in the construction of the required concepts. In this way, we have addressed the assessment standards related to learning outcomes 1 and 2 in this series. However, we have also examined how science and technology has impacted society and so given opportunities to address some of the assessment standards of learning outcome 3. The learning outcome and assessment standards for each lesson are stated at the beginning of each video lesson in the series. In addition, lesson outcomes linked to these are also given for each lesson. This theme in physics requires learners to represent their practical observations in different ways. For example, we observe the effect a bar magnet has on both iron filings and on compass needles placed around it and then develop the abstract idea of a force field represented by a field line diagram. Learners will need to be supported in making the link between the real and the diagrammatic representation because they do not often look the same. To help learners make these connections, we have used diagrams in conjunction with real apparatus to help develop learners' understanding of abstract concepts. We have also shown that one can represent the same thing by looking at a different view by using animations. In addition to diagrams and animations, we have used the right-hand rule to help learners remember the relationships established for both the magnetic effect of electric current and for electromagnetic induction. Of course, another way scientists represent concepts is by using mathematical symbols. We have carefully shown how the mathematical expression of Faraday's law links to the relationships we found when doing experiments. The success of these video lessons depends on the way you use them in your classroom. We suggest that you watch the lessons yourself as part of your planning. Decide which videos you will use and think about how to integrate them into your learning program. To get the full benefit of the lessons, your learners need to engage actively with the concepts presented. So when you preview the videos, think about how to introduce each lesson and what follow-up activities will be useful. Also watch out for places in the video where you could pause to have a class discussion or ask learners to complete an activity or solve a problem posed in the video. 
We have used this pause icon to suggest some of these places to you. As you watch each lesson, make a note of materials and other resources you might need to bring to the class. For example, you could get your learners to make a simple electromagnet using copper wire, a nail, and a battery. Assessment is an important part of teaching and learning, and the lessons provide opportunities for a range of different types of assessment. When you pause the video for learners to do an activity, you can assess their understanding of key ideas in the video and adjust your lesson plan if necessary. The task provided at the end of each lesson is always linked to at least one of the lesson outcomes and thus provides you with a useful assessment opportunity. In the first lesson of this series, we review the important but abstract concept of a force field by observing the pattern of iron filings formed around a bar magnet and the arrangement of seeds around a charged electrical conductor. We then explore the link between magnetism and a moving charge by revisiting Oosterdt's famous discovery. And we represent the magnetic field formed around a straight conductor by drawing in a field line diagram. In lesson two, we investigate what variables affect the strength of the magnetic field around a straight conductor. And we introduce the very important concept of magnetic flux. We also show how the right hand rule can be used to determine the direction of the magnetic field when given the direction of the current or the direction of the current when given the direction of the magnetic field. In lesson three, we find out what happens to the magnetic field when a straight conductor is bent into a loop of wire and we test different variables to see how to make a stronger electromagnet. We begin lesson four by recapping the concept of EMF, and then we investigate how a magnet can be used to induce an EMF in a conductor. We show that only when there is a rate of change of magnetic flux cutting across a coil will an EMF be induced in the coil. We examine the mathematical expression of Faraday's law to show how to increase the induced EMF and to solve problems. In lesson five, we begin by defining the relationship between induced EMF and induced current. And then we explore the relationship between the moving magnetic field and the direction of the induced current. In this lesson, we apply the principle of electromagnetic induction to transformers. We show how a changing EMF in the primary coil induces an EMF in the secondary coil. We then establish the relationship between the EMF in the coils and the number of turns or winds by applying Faraday's equation to both coils. We use this relationship to solve simple transformer problems and then see how transformers are used to distribute electricity from a power station across the country to our homes. In our final lesson, we investigate how a television works. We look back in history at the work of Geisler, Crookes and Braun to show how a stream of particles will be affected by a magnetic field. We also examine the components of a modern television to show how the many different aspects of electromagnetism link together in one device. Please note that a television should never be opened up without the assistance of a qualified technician or engineer as television sets operate on high voltage and contain components that store charge even when disconnected. There is a set of lesson notes for this video series on our website. These notes give a summary of the key points of each lesson and the tasks and suggested task answers. More detailed teacher support for this series 
including additional ideas for assessing your learners' progress toward the assessment standards, is also available on the website. We hope this teacher guide has given you a useful overview to this series and will help you to use the mindset resources when teaching electromagnetism to your grade 11 learners. Goodbye.